and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain, and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the web website svos.org. Our guest, Barbara Grauke, is a glass artist. She works in the warm glass process using glass powders to create very interesting and exciting textures and colors in her three-dimensional artwork. So welcome, Barbara. Thank you, Sally. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about how did you get involved in creating glass? I've always liked glass. I started doing stained glass in the 70s. And um, after a few years of that, I met some people who were doing hot blown glass. And I kind of got deviated in that one and went off on, on that tangent. And eventually, I, I started working with glass powders and um, found that I could make my own glass, sheets of glass, essentially. And I just love it. Interesting. So you've done the gamut. You've cut glass into stained glass windows? Yes. And then blown it using the fires? And, yes. Oh, and wow. 2,000 degrees. Yes. Wow. After a while, I got to be a little bit too much. But um, working within a kiln, it's not so difficult. It's more like ceramics in a way. Oh, I can create my own sheets of glass, put them in the oven, melt them, do what I want with them. Yes. And so you have this beautiful glass and all this interesting shapes. It's, I just love the colors mm -hmm. of them. What inspires you when you're thinking about creating a new glass? Well, I live near the coast. So okay. of course, the ocean, the waves, the blues, the greens. And I also live in the redwoods. And so the redwood bark, um, the earth, the crackling of the earth, the sand, there's so many textures out there that right. it's almost impossible not to be inspired. Cool. So that's when you're thinking about a piece of glass, do you envision what colors they're going to be? Or how do you? I think it's a little more spontaneous. It's almost like an abstract piece of work. It comes emotionally. And, and so when I go in in the morning, I decide what color palette I might be working with. And I stick with that for the day. And then I just play around. Yes. Excellent. Well, you brought some pictures that we can talk about of some of your glass pieces. Yes, and did. they're functional pieces. Yes, they are. So let's take a look at those now, and you can tell us how you created them. OK, let's do it. That's my animal print. Um, I started out putting glass powders on a fiber paper and adding moisture and crackling it. Um, it's about three processes of kiln work, three days or so. And um, I've put red and orange and yellows on there, uh, fired it. Then I came back and put some more on there and fired it. And then I ended up putting a piece of clear glass on top of that and draping it over a mold to get that shape. So those are kind of technical, but um, it's, it's basically my tools. So that's a mold. That was a cone-shaped mold upside down that the, essentially a square sheet of glass went on top of. Oh. And I heat it to a certain point so that it then I catch, catch it at a certain point and stop it from draping anymore. Yeah. Interesting. That's a beautiful yeah. shape. And that's another mold, but it's much larger. That's probably about 15 inches, um, mostly done with greens, as you can see. Um, you can see a little bit of the the backside with the texture from the fiber paper. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so that, that how was a do you circle. Get the <laughs> rounded edges like that. That was a circle. I had I okay. I start with the with the fiber paper is the actual size of the mold, and I begin with that. So I had a circle, and then I put it into this mold that actually creates a square shape, just to see what would happen. And I came out with that. Interesting. I like that shape. This is more of a technique where I focused on the um, glass powder and how it separates into those little tiny shapes, different shapes. I drew a line, a couple of lines on the paper. And I'm manipulating this with my hands underneath the paper. So um, that's turquoise and ivory working against each other. I really like that pattern. Beautiful. And then do you have a plate shape that you yes. put it on? Yep. Okay. Started out as a circle piece of paper. And then yeah. the heat turns it into the shape. Yes. Interesting. And oh, that's my earth that. bowl. Again, um, that I, I'm, it's 
more like a grain, you know, the grains of earth. Um, so that has quite a bit going on for it. I think I might have fired that three times, just adding more color in between the cracks. Yeah. So I like the sort of earth layers that yes. you have going on there. Yeah. It does look interesting. There's, a, there's enough contrast in that one that I like. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. So. And then, of course, I have to get crazy with the color. So there's the purples and the blues and neon green. But each time, if that first process, I probably, I was putting purple down on the edges and green in the middle and then came back after it had fired and it, glass tends to separate it, it. It tries to find its happy zone and it's usually about an eighth inch thick. Huh. So it bubbles up basically. And so those cracks opened up more and then I added the blue and fired that with the clear sheet. And that also is to a mold, is shaped to a mold. So. Interesting. So when you put the colors together, do you know exactly what color it's going to be? Or is it more like glaze where you kind of guess a little bit? You, I, I've done lots of tests, and okay. so I, I, I have a pretty good idea. But there's always a surprise. The green will react to the blue sometimes because um, it breaks down. The, the, the minerals break down oh, and um, tend to bring out metals if they're contrasting with each other. So I might have more of a copper coming up in places that I didn't even put a copper color. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a couple more. I, I really like the orange against the blue. I, I, I tend to want to have something more dramatic. It's, each piece then is a very nice abstract painting. Right. How big are these dishes, would you say? Those are, are approximately 11 inches long. Okay, so, so they're not so terribly big, but but yeah, very nice serving dishes. They I are, think. yeah, they beautiful. Are. I like the oval shape. I work with that a lot. Yeah, <clears throat> and then the rectangle. The one on the left actually had an, a stencil put on, sifted powder onto a stencil on top of it. The one on the right, I just scribed a whole bunch of lines onto the paper so that I could open up the crack. And so and this it. is multiple firings in a kiln yes. to get this to yes. work. Interesting. A lot of playtime. Yes. <laughs> and that was all, all three of those are done with stencils. Contrasting colors on the two with the blue and the, and the red and then the one in the back purple had, had this funny uh, So arrow, how do you arrow. get it to curve up in a kind of a point like that? It's a very small mold. Those are oh, okay. really tiny. They're like two and a quarter. Inch. They're sushi plates. Like oh, it's a little excellent. Long. Yeah. <laughs> so the points, so it starts off as a square. Yes. And then you Flat. drape it over a small mold. It actually slumps. This would be slumping. Slumping. The term, yes. Inside a mold, yes. Oh, okay. So the mold yeah. is underneath this. Yes, it is. Oh, and That was actually uh, draped over a large conal shape. Okay. I was experimenting with this one, but I, I really liked the separation of the pattern around the edge. It's beautiful. And why is the pattern not clear on the inside? That is the texture of the fiber paper. So instead of actually draping it with the, with the fiber paper on the outside, I draped it with the fiber paper oh, so face it, up. It yeah. adds an interesting idea. So the color is on the outside of this yes. instead of the, the inside. The glassy color, the, the, because yeah. it has the clear layer. Interesting. On the yeah. Very nice. Ah, uh, and our, my animal print. Again, I call that kind of a batik, yes, brown. Um, again, a stencil. Do you even, did this one start off as a circle or a square? It started off as a circle. As a circle. Yes. And you <laughs> you it can't over. tell, huh? <laughs> it's, well, it's just so interesting and organic shape. And what yes. would you use that for? Um, looking at it and saying, oh, <laughs> Besides that's looking wild. At how beautiful conversation it is. piece. <laughs> So that wouldn't be a serving dish like the others, no, not quite no, as. No, it's um, pretty dramatic. Just could have some like interesting baubles inside. That's or something, true. Something it's like collected that. balls or something. <laughs> yeah. So we went into your studio. Yes. And had a very good time looking at how you actually produce the glass powdered mm -hmm. pieces step by step and the kiln that you use. Yes. So we. We made a video. All right. So let's take a look at the video that we created and to see the process of okay. creating these. Great. Let's do it. I'm Barbara Grauke, and this is my glass studio in La Honda, California. I primarily work with glass powders on fiber paper. 
In this video, I will be demonstrating how to make a thin sheet of colored glass using finely ground glass powders. I am using COE 96. First, I pick a commercial mold and cut a piece of 1 8 inch fiber paper to the shape of that mold. I do use commercial molds, which are heavily available in, in lots of different places, and it makes it very simple to um, conform to this type of technique. I place the fiber paper on a portable kiln shelf and wet it slightly with a mister. Then I take the glass powder and sift the powder, covering the entire sheet of paper. I actually use a full range of colors <laughs> because I never am in the same mood every day, and it depends on what mood I'm in. I do like the blues and greens because it relates to a lot of the water that I am actually very live very close to and I'll tend to go to the oranges and reds for more of an earthy connection. I use powder because anything that's more granulated will not sift properly and it won't move with the water. In this demonstration I'm using one color over the whole paper but there is an infinite amount of possibilities as to what colors you can use and where you place those colors on the paper. I am spraying water onto the powder watching that it does not start to puddle. If you go too wet, you can wick the excess water up with some toilet paper. If you are too dry, the powder will not adhere to the paper. I like to crackle because I find it, it is so organic that I'll always be surprised at to what, what I'm getting every time I play with it. I have gotten to the point where I know when I have really thick, I can get really dense lines, or when I'm doing very thin, I can variate the, the, the colors. And it's, it is a lot like nature, so there's a lot of that. When I am satisfied with the look, I place the paper back on the kiln shelf and put it in the kiln and fire it. The glass powder has now melted into lines and globs, leaving rounded edges. I am sifting another color on top of the melted glass and spraying that powder, pushing it into the crevices. The dry powder should flow over the soft edges of the melted glass into the crevices. I then cut a piece of clear glass that is the same shape as the mold and fiber paper I am working with. As an added technique, I have sifted white glass powder over a stencil on the clear piece of glass before placing it on the color sheet. You can get a lot of different stencils from commercial stencils to making your own stencils to the one like I have for the bread which is a crocheted item I probably got at the flea market. So there's a lot of options out there. This all goes back in the kiln for a second firing. Now that the glass is thick enough to handle, the fiber paper needs to be scrubbed off. You can use any rough sponge to start, and I like to sandblast the back side to get rid of any remaining residue. The edge of the piece will also be a little rough, so I take and grind the edge with a belt sander. You can use diamond pads with a little more elbow grease to achieve the same results. This step ultimately gives the piece a more finished look. I will then place the clean sheet of colored glass over the oval platter mold and slump it in the kiln. My kiln fires a little hot and retains the heat for a long time. Your kiln might have different characteristics that can affect the overall firing. That was fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the firing schedule. How do you know what steps to take? We put the information on for people who are interested. Yes. They can stop the video <coughs> and watch it, but how do you know? Um, over time, I have done some testing, but there's a lot of information out there that you can find out. Um, Facebook has wonderful glass groups. You can always ask questions and say, oh, interesting. oh, yeah. But every kiln is different. That's the thing. That box heats differently. So you have to try your own. You have to test. Does so. it matter what size the piece is or no. the thickness necessarily? No? just Yeah, you, you need to know 
what to do you have longer longer rates for this thickness or whatever yeah but um, it's 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 not too difficult to just try it out and if it breaks well then try again try again <laughs> so you start with small pieces you wouldn't yeah. do an enormous oh no bowl no no that's my baby because <laughs> yeah. that's a lot of glass and a lot yes, of work it is so tell us a little bit about your tools and okay. how the where the glass comes from how yes. is it made the powders yes the powders are made uh, essentially from sheets of 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 art glass that are made. Um, Glass is chemicals, basically. It's from minerals to chemicals. They leach out certain um, materials so that you can use things like cadmium and selenium um, mm -hmm. for coloring. So the sheet of glass ends up getting ground down to a powder form like this. I use the powder form because, like I said in the video, it has to be like flour or else right. I can't sift it with my little sifters here. Right. Um, but there are other other degrees of it. You can go from sugar, salt, size, all the way down to the powder form. Interesting. Um, and so I did notice yes. when we were in your studio that we were both wearing masks. Oh, yes. So tell me a little bit about safety for the glass yes, and you, what you need to do. Yeah, you do not want to breathe the airborne materials there. They're not good for your lungs. So, right. And, but respirators really work well. And ventilation. Right. And ventilation. So, so having a well ventilated yes. place. Yes. And we also have the fiber paper I was talking about. Okay. This is so really tell important. This is this is what I was actually sifting the powder onto right. and getting wet and stuff. It's very thin, but it doesn't burn out in the kiln. Um, there's actually a sugar binder in it, so it gives off a, a funny little smell, but it's safe. It's sugar? Yeah. Oh what interesting. And, and, and it doesn't burn even at those huge high temperatures? No. Wow. No. It'll it'll attach Essentially, it'll attach to the to the glass, and it won't be until the very end that I actually take it off. So, and you have so. to scrub it to get it yeah, off, too. Yeah, yeah. So, and then this is the mold. This is one of those molds that I actually put the glass into. And, and it slumps. Yes. If you put it in a mold and it's the mold's underneath, it's slumping. Yes. And if you put it on top of something like a um, cone-shaped stainless, it'll drape. Interesting. So. And so this also doesn't isn't affected by the heat? Not at all. No, no, no. They're, they're the commercial made uh, molds. You can make your own molds, but I, I don't think it's necessary anymore because you can buy whatever you need Interesting. for functional cool. items. Yes. So we have some pictures <clears throat> of some close-ups of the textures that okay. you've created. So let's take a look at those now and maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the powders. Okay. Let's do that. Ah, the blue sea. Yes. Um, I think this is one of the first ones I made. It just was really exciting because um, it really reminds me of the ocean. Um, there is some green in there. I don't know if it shows well on the screen. Or a little not. bit, you can yeah. see it. But it just it just picked up just what I needed from. So what colors are those? What would you say? Well, I would say the the middle one was a little bit more like a cobalt, and the, the outside blue was a sea blue. Um, and then that green is probably an apple green. So kind of a bright green, yes. So, and this one, this one I was really playing around. I, it probably has about four layers of, of this stenciling that I did. Um, layering with white or ivory, then browns and a little bit of the yellow and the, you know, it, it just kept going. Interesting. I, yeah. Do you have to fire in between each layer like I, that? I, I did not on this one. This was really an experiment and it actually worked out. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Yeah. I, you can tell I like to play. <laughs> yeah. um, so there's powder sifted on the back side of this one. There's the blues, the greens, and then what you're seeing in the center is actually a copper effect. Um, what I talked about where the oh, metals yeah. actually mm -hmm mix in with the two colors and so then I added the white in a much rougher cut of of glass um, and it just made it pop yeah and the cosmos is a stencil wow how did you get all those little dots that's that's actually a placemat stencil it's oh. a round placemat it's made out of some kind of pl soft plastic and um, it, it it was uh, Two colors first fired, and then I added the white, like I did with the bread. So there are little holes that you sift through. They are. Through. Yeah, you have oh. to be careful. You have to figure out how to keep it stiff enough when you pull it up that it doesn't right. go all over the place. 
<laughs> oh, this one worked out. Oh, and this one I love because of the red. The red's really, really difficult. It's not one of the happiest things. To, Why? Well, it just is, it's, it's unpredictable. Um, it doesn't tend to heat up and cool down at the same rate as the other colors, and so it can cause some kind of stress. Oh, and so I was really happy with this. This one I does it help to put the clear glass on top of it to make it more stable, or I, does that matter? I don't think it would be as effective. Oh, you know, um, if I was and I can't. I have to be able to work within those cracks to get that red to work with the shapes. So if you did on top, you couldn't because it would be on a sheet of glass. It wouldn't be on the paper. So. Ah, uh, the batik, yes. So the, with this one, I actually drew all of those lines that you see, uh, mostly in the green. And, and um, I had stenciled. And then I, manipulating the paper, I was able to open up those lines and then add the green. And I added some brown. Oh, interesting. So you created that stencil. Yes. I oh, just, that's beautiful. Just drew away and... Said, okay, and then sifted the powders into right. cracks in the paper. Right. Wow. Right. <laughs> That's a really cool technique. Yeah, it, it, there's infinite possibilities. So I enjoyed doing that one. And then this one was mostly lines, just to see the, how that would work. I like the geometric shape mixed in with the abstract uh, kind of random. Yeah, the, you can definitely lines. see the layering effect. Yes. I like yeah. the dark. Is it harder to get certain colors, like darker colors or lighter colors? It seems. Um, uh, to get them, no. To be able to get them to work, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's another issue. Because, again, some, some blues might have more metals in them than others. Right. And you don't usually see, like, dark, dark blue like no. that in a glass. That's no. why I asked. Yeah. It's yeah. Very interesting. And that's a lot of fun. That's just taking the the fiber paper and crackling it from the center out. And um, again, I was able to get the red just enough. So you kind of sprinkle the sort of orangey pink color and the blue down and then yes. crackle it and yes. fire it, yes. sprinkle it. Oh, that's... <laughs> sounds You're like going to be able to do it yourself <laughs> soon. And there's that stencil again. I just love doing this pattern. The blue and the red really works. And this is a little bit more random in the coloring than the other one. The other one had it really straight. Interesting. So, so that's the same. Wow. Now this, this is the typical technique for crackle, where you actually have separated shapes. Um, it d requires a certain amount of thickness um, in, the, in the powder. And so when you manipulate it, it everybody goes away to its own little you know, glob. <laughs> um, I don't do this that much. You know, I, 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 I like to just let it go. And, right. You know, play around with it. But this is the typical crackle type. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your crackling and your techniques are much more involved than just little yes. blobs. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it is. So tell us a little bit about where, where we can see your art. Where do you show? And okay. Well, um, the Silicon Valley Open Studios right. um, is available for everyone to see. Uh, in the first three weekends of May, and I've been doing that this last year. I did it twice. Okay. Um, you can do it three weekends if you find two other places. I, I usually right. host it um, in Half Moon Bay. Um, and then there's the COCA, which is in November. What That's is COCA? The Colony of Co-site Artists. Oh, co -site. so Half yes. Moon Bay area? Half Moon Bay area, El Granada, Moss Beach, all of them. And that's always in November, so that's always a fun one to do. So those are open studios. So yes. where exactly in, is your studio in Half Moon Bay, or no? My studio is in La Honda. La Honda. So yeah, oh, with all the trees and right, the beautiful right. grasslands. Yes. No, I I actually um, host the SVOS in in uh, the La Piazza, in Half Moon Bay. So, um, and then the Coca one also actually. So, I have interesting. Cool. <laughs> so, when you have a show, tell us a little bit about open studios what do you do you can't take your big kiln we went in with no. a video camera so how do you explain to people what you do I usually have a couple of uh, 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 actually five samples of my technique in the process and, okay. and I end up showing them what happens when I first put the, 
the powder on and I get it wet and go on to that. That's about all I can do. Right. You know, step um, by step. So you have yes. examples. Yes. And so they can see the process. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. And so I know you're moving on a little bit to different techniques yes. and spreading out from this um, crackling effect. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been learning? Just a little bit. I'm learning about layering. So uh, the crackling technique will continue on, right. but but um, something like um, where is that one that was here? Oh, okay, um, that I I'm I like to paint. I used to paint, right. and so I kind of want to get into more of a figurative, and so using the two as as a as an option. So yeah. you use a paintbrush to I paint. paint. So like the one that's next to you there, yes, the glossy. Man. I don't think you can see it on the. So anyway. Yes, yes. Um, screen printing and um, uh, powder paint, painting with uh, sponges and um, paint brushes and whatnot. But we'll see how that goes. Excellent. So creating more work, would they be hanging in windows or would they be hanging like in frames, They will for be example? panels, probably panels. wall panels, because that's the t traditional painting thing. But right. I did add to my this one piece here, a little stenciling that I enjoy with the bird. And um, just, you know, get a little bit in there, something else. Yeah, and sh different shapes. Do you ever, like, cut the glass after you're done? Um, no, actually, this one started out as paper, as, as a fiber paper. I, okay. I have to work it. I do have to work the inside. I like having the odd shapes. Um, thinking about sandblasting. Oh, interesting. And adding shapes that way, yes. So awesome. There's never an end. <laughs> well, excellent. Well, thank you so much for being on Talk Art. This has been a fascinating thank you, story. And thank you for letting me come into your studio. That was really fun, too. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. You're, you're welcome. <laughs>